Good morning. Today's procurement professionals group topic is inside the inclusion marketplace. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to go over a few housekeeping items. My name is Allison and I'm the webinar organizer for today. We want to make sure today's presentation is extremely valuable for you. So we ask that you submit all questions by clicking on the question button in the control panel and typing your question there. Our pre presenter today is Marco Gagurevich, the Greater Cleveland Partnerships Director of Minority Business Growth. Marco will lead us in exploring everything the marketplace has to offer you and your business, how it can help diversify your supply chain, and some of the best practices for using it. Marco? Thank you, Allison, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, as Allison already mentioned, we're going to be reviewing the inclusion marketplace today. Um, we'll, we'll be addressing some frequently asked questions uh, and Obviously, this might be review for some of you who are already registered, but also this is an introduction for those of you who have not yet had the chance to utilize the marketplace. Hopefully on your screen, you are currently seeing the homepage um, of the Inclusion Marketplace. A first, first question asked, obviously, is how do you access it or where is it? You go to your web browser and type in inclusionmarketplace.com and that will land you on this page um, that you see here. Now, uh, before we get into the, the, uh, the inside of the, of the tool and, and review it, um, it's important to kind of explain what the inclusion marketplace truly is. Um, so I'll begin with that. Uh, the marketplace is an online portal uh, or platform to help minority suppliers identify opportunities that are out in the in the market uh, on the on the flip side it is also a, is a resource or a tool buyers uh, to identify minority owned firms that are in, out in the in the, in the marketplace or uh, additionally to be able to promote their opportunities promote events that are up, that are coming down the down, down the line uh, to engage or interact with minority owned firms. Um, so we'll take an inside look at, at the tool now. Um, as Allison had mentioned, this is supposed to be a little bit interactive. My camera froze here, so I'm gonna take it off. Uh, it's intended to be interactive. So please feel free to pop, drop questions in the chat or uh, any questions you want, and we'll, we'll um, address them accordingly. So, as mentioned, the Inclusion Marketplace is, is a resource that's both uh, available or accessible to buyers and suppliers. Um, before I log in and, and kind of show you the, how, how these, uh, the tool actually works, um, there is a frequently asked question that I get. Uh, what does it cost to participate with or, or utilize the tool? And the answer is, there is no cost. It's absolutely free for both buyers and suppliers to engage and interact utilizing this tool. So I'm going to start off by, by saying that when a buyer or supplier comes on to the site, uh, they have the option here, if they haven't already, already, already registered, to sign up as a buyer or a supplier. Um, it's a relatively easy process uh, once you, know, you, give, you provide your uh, first and last name, uh, email, and you receive a link to then uh, further process, uh, go through the process of uploading any additional information that they're asking for profile in the system. We're gonna start off by taking a look at what a buyer profile looks like and how to use it. So what you're seeing right now is a, an example of the dashboard of a buyer's profile. Um, typically, you'll have their logo on the top left corner, some of their information here, uh, a search bar for suppliers, uh, a list of opportunities that they've posted, a, events that they've posted, and then obviously we will go over some of these other services. But let's start with the search for suppliers. Uh, one of the benefits for buyers that utilize the inclusion marketplace is that they can essentially just do a random word search or a keyword search similar to what you would do with Google um, 
but maybe specifically to a either name of a company that you're familiar with or maybe just a um, service or an offer. So in this particular example, let's just say that we were looking for a marketing firm. You would type in the word marketing and then click on the search button. And what you would see is this, this, uh, this screen pop up where you obviously have the word marketing, which you originally typed in, but you also can refine your search results based on in industry type, uh, if the business is minority owned, women owned or both, or by their NAICS or commodity codes. So any one of these layers or fields can be utilized to refine your search, identify the business that you're looking for. But essentially, whether you're using one of these lines or all of them to, to identify the business you're looking for, um, this screen will populate with businesses that are a fit according to what you what specifications you're providing. In this particular example, uh, you see a company that that has pretty much all of the all of the columns filled out. Let's take a look at this company right here. And what you have is essentially access to a snapshot, if you will, of, of the business. Um, the business uploads their logo, their address, phone, all of the NAICS or commodity codes related to the business, name of the primary contact, their website, all diversity classifications that they, they identify under. Um, we obviously encourage all suppliers who utilize this tool to upload a detailed description of, of their offering, a description of, of their business. And basically it's, it, it kind of services as a portfolio, if you will, um, that the buyer can kind of skim through to have a better grasp on, on what uh, the history of the business, to understand the business, um, so, so definitely a, a, a great value uh, to you as a buyer. If, so finally, the last piece that we add in the snapshot is certification. So uh, for some companies, certification is one way in which they, they wish to engage with minority-owned firms and women-owned businesses. So we have a space here for businesses that are certified to upload all of their certifications. And as a buyer or as a and user, you could click on any one of these PDFs and have immediate access to see uh, certification, verify that it's that it that it's from the organization that's on here, and also that it's not expired. Um, so this is definitely one of the benefits uh, to leveraging the tool as a buyer because it does let you take a very quick look at some of the businesses uh, as as you're kind of skimming through and looking for for to fill your needs. Um, obviously, you, you can sometimes have a search result that has numerous pages, a few, or sometimes less. Uh, it all depends on how much you refine the search on the front end. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard of the supplier and take a look here at other services. Now, the key function or the role uh, in terms of how the tool engages with both stakeholders, buyers, and suppliers is it hinges upon and depended upon uh, the creation of opportunities. So we obviously encourage all of our buyers to leverage this tool um, a, when, when trying to post something or trying to identify firms uh, because on the other side of the tool, suppliers are, are leveraging this to to find and and seek uh anything that's you know anything that's a fit according to their offering so let's start with how do you post an opportunity well first you identify what kind of opportunity it is right it's a, it can be an rfp or an rfi an rfq or just a general buying opportunity um, once you've identified that you provide a title or a name for it um, it's it's obviously something we encourage that they that the buyer utilizes a, some wording in the title of the opportunity that refers to the scope. So it's easier to kind of skim through as a supplier. Um, obviously, the due date is is uh, essentially the date you wish to hear or receive a proposal by. So if if you two week turnaround. You put it here that in two weeks the due date is the due date by which suppliers uh, need to send you an email or uh, send you a proposal or contact you. 
Um, in this box, under the description, you you would be providing some insight or information a little bit more specific around the opportunity. Now, um, most people, if they if an RFP, it will literally do a copy and paste uh, function there, and and uh, essentially uh, just just use a couple of paragraphs from the actual RFP. Uh, so that so that by, uh, suppliers can be aware of what what it consists of. Um, additionally, there is the brief summary. Now the brief summary is is really one or two sentences that that buyers uh, provide to to make it you know that that is a very very uh, straight to the point description of the opportunity. Um, so that you know uh, while buyers are skimming through them. They they have a little bit more insight on on what what uh, what it in, what it entails. Um, here, in terms of the attachment, you can actually attach the RFP or the RFQ, uh, whatever it might be, um, so that so that there's more information and the suppliers can have a more informed uh, decision. Um, buyers also have the option while while posting opportunities to. To if if they are aware of what the particular NAICS code or commodity code of the service they're looking for is, they can identify the NAICS code. And when they have identified the NAICS code, this drop-down box for suppliers will populate with the names of all of the businesses within the database um, that that have a matching NAICS or commodity code. Uh, at that point, a buyer has the choice or the option. To to check the check a box next to the name of any one of the companies they would like to engage with directly, and what I mean by that is they would check a box next to the name of the company, and that company would receive so that supplier would receive a notification on their dashboard, their personal dashboard, informing them about this opportunity and how someone obviously has identified them. And, sh and shown interest in having them apply, so it is a an indirect way of engaging engaging with with the firms in the system without necessarily having to contact all of them. Um, so that's how they get the notification. In terms of the estimated value, if it's an RFP, you don't typically provide one, but if it's a general buying opportunity, you sometimes will see that buyers uh, put a, a basic price range. Of what they're looking to spend on any given project. Now, here on this final box at the bottom left, on the contact info, uh, is where you would you would click on this drop-down box, and you would identify who is the point person in your organization, in terms of who's registered, obviously, that would be the person in charge of this particular opportunity. Now, to clarify. Uh, one of the questions we also get frequently asked is how many uh, users can you have under one organization's profile? The answer is you can have as many as you'd like. Uh, we do not want to limit the amount of individuals that can engage with the tool within an organization because sometimes there are a lot of, uh, there are many individuals who can make buying decisions. So we want to make sure everyone has access. So that is a benefit to this in which you can essentially add as many users as you want in your organization and that individual can then post their own particular opportunities in here and just click the box next to the name and they assigned as the point of contact or the POC uh, for said opportunity. Now, another question or another frequently asked question that we get is, well, what if it's a, our organization already has a, a vendor portal or a supplier portal for people to sign up with, and that's how we engage and that's how we identify firms. We say, absolutely, that's fantastic. Um, we would say and recommend um, that if most of the engagement they want to have is with, with the suppliers through their own portal, uh, leverage the inclusion marketplace to provide some form of description about the opportunity. And if you can't go too much into detail, provide some detail, but also have, provide a link that sends or refers the, the supplier to your 
particular organizational vendor portal or supplier portal. Um, so this is this is kind of one way in which the buyers can definitely uh, do the outreach and the engagement and truly uh, attempt make it a, a solid attempt to connect with minority firms and guide them through their process. So uh, we obviously encourage that, and we we don't see it as a limiter uh, or limitation to to uh, utilize this. Tool. All right, the next point here uh, is the creation of events so what kind of events are are there well they're all kinds right? uh, before when we were all meeting in person and i hope we get to back to that soon uh we were doing meet and greets in-person workshops and conferences but uh essentially right now for the most part many people are doing webinars um, and what what a buyer can leverage this part of the tool for is um, essentially um, if they're trying to do outreach if they're trying to identify uh, minority or women-owned businesses in the ecosystem uh, they can hold events of uh, you know something like getting to know our company or how to do business with our company uh, information that that definitely is is needed um, and is is appreciated the the effort is appreciated so this is one way in which you can you can utilize the marketplace to do part of that outreach and inform people that you're holding or hosting an event so let's just say it was a, a getting to know our organization event you would create a event title for it obviously you know how to do business with xyz company you would provide the date of the event uh if there's a registration link you would provide the registration link if it was online you would provide the link for the online um access and then uh, a description of sorts of what's what's to be expected of the event what's going to be covered or what's going to be reviewed or what the benefit might be to to the firms that that engage or or participate um additionally you can also add a flyer uh to to the link so that if there is any collateral or or material that you want to share you can add that here to the file um, and if the event is in person you obviously can provide the physical address here at the bottom uh, and then click submit and what would happen is that event would then uh, go into all of the suppliers uh, events tabs or events uh, column which i'll get to shortly but that's that's obviously the event site is another way you can definitely engage and interact with with minority and women-owned businesses by using this tool. Now here, as I hinted before, my opportunities refers back to the opportunities that you yourself have posted. Uh, my events, sim similar story. It's events that you have posted in the past, and obviously uh, another frequently asked question that we get is, well, if I have an ongoing opportunity uh, that you know, occurs every three or six months, uh, do I really have to post the opportunity again? The answer is no. You don't have to post it again. You would just go back to one of the previously posted opportunities. You'd click on the edit button and you would just change the due date. You could push it out another six months, another three months. So making it as easy as possible for buyers to kind of engage with this so there's not a lot of repetition. Um, similarly with with uh events if you're going to hold an event or host an event every three or six months you can do the same exact thing you click on there the edit button under the event that you want to repeat and just create a, a, a push out the date or another due date uh or the date that the event's going to occur rather and that's how how you can kind of just engage and basically it's it avoids duplication which I know a lot of our, our procurement friends are, are fans of. Uh, finally, the button that I have here uh, is the buyer chatter button. Now, the buyer chatter button is an option that you have as a buyer in which you can kind of, uh, if you have questions about other suppliers that, you, that you're considering working with, or if you have just general questions that you want to put out there into the, into the uh, procurement universe, uh, the anything you type in buyer chatter will essentially uh, be sent to all buyers 
for them to respond in case they they have a, any additional information for you. So it's it's a great a little function or, or uh, asset that you can have in case that you have any questions um, while while utilizing the tool or uh, around this work. Um, the last thing I will show you is in the case I had mentioned before, you can add as many users as you'd like in the tool. If you go up here to the top right uh, to what our developers affectionately call the hamburger menu, uh, you scroll down to where it says invite an additional user. And you essentially just type the individual's first name, last name, and their email, and they'll receive a link. As easy as that. Um, to basically register and become another user on, under the profile of your company. So, uh, but I obviously as many people as you want to add is is, is you know is, they can and it's accessible. So definitely, I would I would recommend you you do that um, as you move move forward with the tool. Um, so that kind of summarizes the buyer side. Uh, obviously, if there are any questions, we'll, we can address them later, unless there's anything right now, Allison. All good so far, Marco. You're doing a good job of answering everyone's questions before they ask them. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get ahead of, ahead of the curve here. Uh, <laughs> so back to the Inclusion Market homepage. Uh, a supplier who wants to engage the, with the tool does the same thing. Once they register, they log in. And you'll notice that the dashboard for a supplier is very different than that of a buyer, right? You'll notice that at the very top the center stage of the of the screen, you'll notice the search for opportunities. Search of opportun for opportunities is really why suppliers engage with the tool in the first place. Want to know what's out there? Want to know who's looking to work with them? Um, this is this is essentially the the crux the right it's the, the central focal point so with that said let's let's just say because it has a keyword function someone who's working and i'm obviously very general here we're just going to say construction without going too much into detail yet you type the word construction in the search uh, similarly to when um a buyer is doing a search for suppliers. They have a few other fields to refine the search. You, um, the the buyer or the end user can uh, initially do a keyword search, or they can refine their search based on the type of opportunity it is, whether it's an RFP, an RFQ, or a general buying opportunity. Or they can also narrow the scope of of the of the search uh, based on their NAICS or commodity codes. So. Let's just they could they could uh, basically click on that and, and identify their NICs, uh, and that would obviously refine the search further. But for the sake and purpose of this uh, exercise, we're just going to how this how this works. Now, obviously, in this case, uh, typing the word construction, a few opportunities populated on the screen, and let's just go here to the first one, right? So. To understand the experience of a supplier while utilizing the tool, um, you'll see that suppliers will click on on the on the opportunity, and it'll come or populate the screen as a snapshot. Uh, what does it typically contain? Uh, sometimes it contains the logo of the buyer who's who's posting. It it obviously provides the date of uh, in which the date the opportunity was posted. Uh, who posted it? The point of contact from the organization, their email, the due date by which they need to either submit a proposal or contact that individual. Uh, obviously, it explains the opportunity type here. But finally, if you do attach opportunity, uh, or rather, if you attach a document to the, the opportunity, uh, you are now capable to uh, the, the rather the supplier is able to download that that document and skim through it. Now, as mentioned before. Um, in the summary or the description of the opportunity, uh, buyers are able to just basically cut and paste straight from the RFP and kind of just uh, post it here. And that's and this is essentially what a supplier is able to see, and this is how they engage um, when they're reviewing the opportunity. Um, so this is this is essentially easy for for suppliers to find. 
a, what they're looking for. Obviously, they can refine their search, as I mentioned, if, if they want to, if there are opportunities out there that are more concrete or electric, they could, they could obviously um, a, do a keyword or cross-reference based on the database of the opportunities posted to, to find that. Uh, but another, another just a takeaway, not so much a frequently asked question, but something that definitely we encourage is that when buyers are posting opportunities, uh, the more information that they provide in the description, uh, the easier it is to do the cross-reference search based on keywords. So what I mean is if they use general words like it's it's a construction project and and they don't necessarily define the work, uh, break it down in, in parts, uh, sometimes you know, an electrician who, who, or electrical engineer wants to utilize this tool and he says, well, I'm looking for electrical. Uh, they, it'll be much easier for you to find the supplier you're looking for if you do uh, do try to provide a little bit more detail um, in your description. So that's just a little a little uh, piece of advice there to make it easier to connect and identify. Um, obviously, when I, we're referring to the events, uh, suppliers have on their dashboard here uh, access to all events that are in the system. So obviously referring back to the previous example uh, that I had made, uh, when a buyer posts an, uh, an event out there, suppliers have it uh, readily available and accessible on their dashboard to see. Um, so just make sure that, you know, whatever the title is, it's, it's appealing, it, that the description explains what you're, what you're at, what you're going towards, and uh, that's it. You'll, you'll get, catch their attention and hopefully attract them to whatever event you're hosting. Uh, under this column of opportunities, I would refer you back to the, in the demonstration when we were um, discussing the posting of an opportunity that when a buyer is posting an opportunity rather, uh, and they are identifying uh, firms within the database based on their NAICS or commodity codes. And you'll, you might remember I did, we went uh, through that drop down box and that drop down box, as I mentioned, would populate with this is essentially where those opportunities, those uh, indirect engagements, as I as I, hint, I mentioned or defined them, uh, would show up. So a supplier would would have this filled out with uh, all of the opportunities that were referred to them by the actual buyers uh, while posting them. So definitely a, a great resource there. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for for the suppliers. It's very straightforward. It's how they engage. Um, and let me see, another piece here I would add is just another piece of information rather, uh, is that every first and 15th of the month, the um, buyers and suppliers who are registered within the inclusion marketplace receive, receive some form of update or monitor, which will give them an update as to, as to you know, what, who are the new buyers that have registered in the last 15 days? Who are the new suppliers? What new opportunities are being posted? What new events? Um, so is, as a, an addition uh, to not just engaging through the tool, we're also obviously going to the extent of providing those, those uh, updates every 15 days. So everyone is kind of always aware of, of what's going on within the marketplace. At this point, I, I would be open to answer any questions you might all have. Hey, Marco, we do have a question, um, and it's from someone who jumped on late, so they apologize. And a very kind question. They just were asking if the inclusion marketplace is a tool that's free to use as members, or if it's paid. Great question. Uh, the answer is that it is a free tool for buyers and suppliers. So our members definitely benefit from from uh, the accessibility and the fact that it's that it's economical. Excellent. That is all I see in here right now. Marco, would you mind reminding everyone how they can access the inclusion marketplace? Absolutely. 
So go to your web browser and just type in inclusionmarketplace.com and it'll take you straight to our homepage. Um, and just a reminder, obviously, whether you're a buyer or supplier, you can just sign up. It's easy to do. Um, and you'll, you'll have access um, both as a buyer to, to minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses within, within our database, as well as if you're a supplier, you'll have access to the opportunities that our corporate partners, uh, both well, actually private and public sector partners, um, are posting. Great, and one more question for you, Marco. Can you be a buyer and a supplier? Yes, you can. Yes, you right. can. If, if you're, uh, especially in the case of a mid-sized company, um, and you're you're looking for business with larger larger corporate partners, uh, and also a, essentially are looking for for suppliers at times to help projects do work. This is this is definitely a tool that you can use and leverage in that way. All right. And as a follow up, how do you sign up for both to be a buyer and a supplier? So when you're when you you would start as a buyer, and I think you have an option when claiming your your company in the in the registration link to also click also be a supplier. All right, that looks like everything. Oops, I'm so struck I spoke too soon. We have one another question coming in. What is, is the geography of buyers and suppliers and before you answer i just want to remind everyone that you can submit questions in the questions panel so feel free to keep those rolling in and then just to repeat myself marco what's the geography of buyers and suppliers that's that's a great question um actually in terms of where where we have promoted it or um, essentially done outreach has been for the most part in northeast ohio However, um, we have companies, buyers that, that have a much greater uh, a footprint than just Northeast Ohio. Um, so, so essentially sometimes they're, they're out of state and, and utilizing it for resources, not only within our region, but also throughout the state of Ohio. Um, in terms of suppliers, we have suppliers who are uh, local, but also some that are national and some that are uh, I found uh, outside of outside of Northeast Ohio, some in Southern Ohio, but sometimes they're out of state as well uh, that are interested in doing businesses. I'm sorry, they're interested in doing business in in our market. So uh, it it does it does bring a broad broad array of of uh, of opportunities. Great. All right. I, I do have one other question, but it's just asking if the recording will be shared. And yes, you will all receive a, a copy of the recording of today's event. Marco, do you have any closing comments you'd like to make? Well, sure. Um, I would say uh, definitely a look at whether you're a buyer or you're a supplier, look at the tool or the inclusion marketplace rather as a resource um you know it's it's not a you know one of one of the it's not so much a question but one of the concerns sometimes is that uh, utilizing external resources does create duplicitous work um and and while it is important to to be efficient and and always strive for efficiency um if your organization is committed to this to supplier diversity and diversity initiatives um, and and the current process isn't necessarily uh, let's say as inclusive as you'd like it to be sometimes adding an additional step is necessary and we did develop the inclusion marketplace with that in mind to try to make it as easy uh, to use and you know easy to navigate through as possible so please don't hesitate to, to leverage the inclusion marketplace to, uh, to identify firms in our in our market to work with. And I, I guess that's what I had to say. Great, thank you, Marco. And I'm 
I apologize because we did have one more question slip in. The question is how many suppliers are there in the inclusion marketplace? So currently the database is over 2,000 um, suppliers. Obviously it's, it's steadily steadily growing, I would say. Um, and as the tool gets gets more, uh, gets gains popularity uh, within our region and without, we're, we're continuing to see more, more representation. So it, it does, um, it, it's, the, it's on a steady incline, I guess you would say. Great. Sounds excellent. All right, everyone, thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. We hope you found this session engaging and informative. If you have any thoughts to share, please let us know. Please make sure to fill out the survey you'll receive via email later today. This concludes today's session. Thanks again and have a great day.